Okay. Um, I think I'll call the meeting to order at 6.02 now that um, Zaley's here. <laughs> um, Carolyn is under the weather, and so she will not be joining us tonight. Um, I think wrote her, he's, he's stuck at work, so he won't be here okay. either. Okay. Got Zaley, it. are you doing minutes or do you want me to do it again? No, I'm good to go. Thank Great. you. <laughs> I'm going to watch you more carefully this time because you make it look so easy. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> okay, so um, we called the meeting to order 602. And um, the first item on the agenda is public comment period. And I'll preface this to say that we have only five minutes available on our agenda this evening to handle um, public comments. Are there any public comments from um, those in attendance? Okay. Hearing none, um, we'll go on to the next agenda item, which is uh, addition of items to the agenda. Are there any items that folks wish to add to the agenda at this time? I was going to add, this is Jono, I was going to add uh, comments about um, the meeting which I had planned to attend with the climate change, though I was unable to attend. So uh, I, I understand that Helen was there. She might have some to contribute if she'd like. Um, and hopefully that will be an ongoing, um, well, it was stated as a forum. So we'll have to see what, uh, what, how it continues, if it continues. Okay, great. Well, we have that as an item, item M, I believe it is, Bristol Climate Change Forum. So we can hear from um, Helen at that, once we get to that point on the agenda. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is review and approval of the minutes from March 10th. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll motion. I didn't write them that time, so I can. <laughs> hey, that's fun. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, a second. Okay. Was that Nancy? Yes. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. Any discussion on those approved minutes? All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Anyone? Opposed, say nay. Okay, I think the ayes carry it. Minutes are approved. Okay, um, correspondence. I'm not aware of any correspondence. Zaley, did we, are you aware of any correspondence we should bring before the group? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Great, okay, so on to old business, Conservation Commission membership. Um, we actually have three members that um, agreed to be reappointed for four year terms, and that's Jono and Alex and Zaley. Um, there was a vote on that on Mondays during Monday's select board and Ian just let me know that that vote approved your reappointment. So thank you for um, serving for another four terms, agreeing to serve. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positions currently in a nine member board. So we do have one vacant position if anyone knows of folks that might be interested, Bristol residents that might be interested to serve on the Conservation Commission. Um, we missed our annual meeting last March. We normally do it in March. And so tonight is our annual meeting where we actually elect chair, vice chair, and clerk positions for, um, for the coming year. And um, let's see, just checking Carolyn's notes here in case I'm missing anything. Um, okay, so at this point we can take nominations for chair, vice chair, and clerk for the coming year. I nominate continuing the existing pattern that we have. Okay. <laughs> out of simplicity. 
I'm happy to uh, go forward with the existing slate. I think it's working very well and I uh, appreciate all of their efforts. Thank you, okay. John. You did that more diplomatically than I did. Uh, <laughs> Unless you fell in love with notes, Helen. <laughs> you could hold <laughs> on with <those> notes. <laughs> Nancy, any um, thoughts? <laughs> I think it's working out great and can stay the same. Okay. Um, I did have a note from Carolyn that she said she would be willing to accept a nomination um, as chair or vice chair, um, though she would make a terrible clerk, she says, because she types pretty slowly. <laughs> so I think I think if all of us agree, we can take that note um, as um, her agreement to serve again as chair. Um, would anyone like to make a nomination? I'll nominate her for chair. Or a motion, I should say, perfect. I'll, I'll oh, okay, I'll make a motion to nominate um, Carolyn for chair and you for vice chair. <laughs> Can I do the same at them at the same time or should I do them separately? We could probably do those two at the same time and then we'll have to have a separate um, right, for me. motion for your position. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I heard that one motion. Is there a second for that motion on the table? Yeah. I will I second that. the motion. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, I'll um, ask all in favor of reappointing Carolyn Dash as chair and myself as vice chair um, for the coming year, say aye. 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 And I'm abstaining. Um, those uh, voting nay or no? Hearing none, the motion carries. Do I have a separate motion now for Zaley's position? I, in fact, I will make a motion that we nominate Zaley for clerk position in the coming year. A second? I second. Okay. Any discussion on the nomination for Zaley as clerk? Okay, hearing none. Um, all in favor of re-electing Zaley as Zaley Smith as clerk of the Conservation Commission, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, very good. Nice job. Our, our annual, um, that was our annual meeting right there. <laughs> okay, let's see here. On to the next item of business. Parks update, um, we can hear from Alex. All right, there we go. Um, okay, so uh, parks are doing pretty good, as you imagine, um, before green up day and after the snow melts, we have this period of there's just like lots of litter everywhere. Um, and the same is true for the parks. Uh, so we're dealing with that, um, but other, otherwise, um, Things are looking pretty good um you know like the mud season wasn't really terrible um for the parking lots they're in they're in decent shape um uh so um i did have one uh, update um on the town green um i had a meeting uh meredith my uh the rec director and myself had a meeting with the uh, representative from the peace garden group peace mm -hmm. garden committee group um and uh, basically, they just wanted to talk um, about some uh, ongoing issues that they're having. Um, and just basically, uh, what we said was um, that if they want to, like, write down all of the things that they're doing, they're just like a volunteer group, right, that they bring in like school groups to help and talk about the Peace Garden and everything. So um, the, the result of the meeting was um, it would be beneficial if they wrote down a bunch of the stuff that they do all the time um, so that they can be uh, included in a future town green management plan, potentially, hypothetically, that would come down the line. Um, 
So I encourage them to uh, reach out to Carolyn if they wanted to get on like the May meeting, for example, um, which I think they're still planning to do, um, which would be an opportunity for them to explain to this group um, sort of what their mission is and what they're looking to do um, long term down the line. Um, and none, none of the issues I should say that they that were coming up with were like urgent or um, anything. It's just kind of like maintenance and how their maintenance should coincide with the park, um, park maintenance. So, you know, like there's the little brick path that goes through the little wedges. Um, and so they're concerned that like uh, the, um, there's getting to be like this gap. So the, the turf kind of like goes in and they're worried about people slipping basically. Um, so, so those kind of things, I, I, I just suggested they kind of write down what are their concerns and outlook and then kind of present it to this group um, so that both groups can be more aware of each other. Um, yeah, and uh, other than that, pretty much it. Um, I, don't, I don't have any uh, Eagle Park uh, fishing platform updates. Um, I, have, I have a few of those. Which okay, cool. But are you all, are you all set on, on the other parts? Yep, yep. I think we're gonna talk about Sycamore Park um separately okay. is that right yeah that sounds like a good idea okay then i'll wait for that yep okay um the only update i have on e eagle park is that we have let's see at the select board meeting on march i believe it was 14th the select board voted to approve the dock doctor's contract to proceed with leveling of the platform and repair of the brackets and so that's a two-phase effort um, and so we're on, we've, we're on their, their list of projects for this coming season to do that. But meanwhile, it's fine for us as a commission to proceed with backfilling the holes in the, um, the pathway that leading up to the concrete ramp, just to make that area a little more serviceable, a little safer for this coming season. And so I would um, suggest that maybe we, we're gonna talk about this, um, well, maybe here we can talk about it. Uh, we need to set up a, a work day at Eagle Park in order to do the mulching of the perennial garden, but perhaps at the same time, we can use the pile of SurePath that's already there in the parking area um, and fill in some of those holes on the, on the approach to the concrete ramp. Um, any thoughts or concerns about that? As a, as a plan from your standpoint, Alex? No, I think that sounds great. Um, yeah, that that area um, that you're talking about, Kristen, is is only gonna get worse unless something gets done to it. So um, yeah, I would be all you're for talking that. talking about holes in the path that goes down to the dock? Correct, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's right now, as it stands, you have to kind of step up quite a ways to get onto the concrete ramp. So we'd be like leveling that out. It's not. Yeah. Ultimately, there are also some repairs that will be funded in part by FEMA, but the process of getting all those approvals and getting um, uh, engineering bids out or, or, or um, scopes of work out to bid is somewhat delayed. So in the meantime, we can at least make it a little bit serviceable and safer for the summer. Um, so maybe as we talk about the calendar in a future item on the meeting here, we can pick a day that might work for everybody to be there at um, Eagle Park to do a work day. And Kristen, did you say the material that's needed to fill in those holes is already there? So we yeah, just fortunately we, we have some leftover <laughs> um, SurePack from past repairs that should be enough to fill at least the biggest hole there. Um, and if we run out, we can also ask Peter uh, to deliver a little, little bit more. Okay. Kristen, a question of uh, remembering last year when we had the workday, uh, is this uh, an erosion issue that occurred from since last year when we were there or is it likely be ongoing at all? What's the status of why it's, how, how it got formed? The holes are there from the Halloween storm um, 2019. And so um, they haven't, it hasn't been repaired since then because it's been in a holding pattern 
waiting for FEMA inspections and then FEMA approvals. And because that's taken so long and because of the COVID pandemic as well. Um, so it's not an ongoing erosion issue. It's, it's left over from that one event. But, right. but we, now, we now have approval to kind of proceed with at least patching it up to make it a little more serviceable as we wait for the more permanent um, repairs and redesign. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Other park up updates beyond those. Okay. Um, the next item is Memorial Park Management Plan. And I can just report that also at the March 14th Select Board meeting, the Select Board discussed our draft management plan and um, generally endorsed the plan, suggested a few wording um, changes and items which I need to, to um, fix, you know, to make the final draft. Um, one other item was um, there was a report prepared by Green Mountain Engineering for the Bristol Rec Club um, and Porter sent that over to me, uh, has sent that over to me since that select board meeting. So I can add in the findings of that brief report, which basically was um, a quick review of the park to understand uh, if there were feasible designs to make that upper level parking area and the river access a little bit more accessible to ADA or, or folks that have um, movement disorders that they could, could uh, at least use that upper part of the park. Um, so I'll incorporate that in the management plan, the findings from that, and then it will be sent back to the select board for their final approval at a coming a future meeting. Any other um, thoughts on that? Or maybe other folks were present at that select board meeting too and remember more details than I do at this moment. <laughs> Yeah, I was there, but I think you covered everything um, that they that they mentioned about besides they were very they were effusive in their praise of uh, its uh, sort of thoroughness and, and detail oriented uh, nature. So they were very happy. Uh, that was my take. Yeah, that's a good point. They were they kind of approved of that format, if you will, for all the other town parks that were were moving ahead on those and, um, and including the Eagle Park one, which we'll talk about in the next item. So, well, you. Kristen, that is, I mean, you did so much work on that and it was really lovely. Like it was pleasant to read <laughs> as right, a document. Right. So like, not just like factual. So right. it was, I mean, well done and thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. No, I had a lot of fun putting it together and history and research is one of my uh, labors of love. So that was fun, fun to do. Thank you though. Um, Okay, so on that item, I think we're wrapped up. Um, the Eagle Park management plan is the next item on the agenda. And I have that plan here, which I can share, hopefully. Um, but first, before I do that, I guess um, we had this as an, as an item or an assignment from Carolyn to do for our homework in preparation of this meeting, whether were there any, um, any, was there anything that anyone like, would like to bring up as they reviewed the Eagle Park plan and things that we might have missed or things we should add? Questions on the plan, maybe? Okay. Should I bring it up and uh, share screen and we can briefly zip through it, maybe? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Sure. The park management plan. Everybody see that? Yes. And let me see. I can Are you able to it enlarge up. it one more uh, size up? Yeah, is that better? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so this pretty much has the same um, format as the Memorial Park plan. So there's a, a general map that orients you to where the lo location is. 
Here's a general description, talks about recent history. I couldn't recall exactly when this sign for Eagle Park went in, but I will, um, I can go back through some of the past town reports and see if I can figure that out. That was, I believe, an Eagle Scout project. Um, ecological setting here, again, we need, um, any volunteers for uh, tree species? And maybe that's something, a task that we can kind of roll into our work day at the park. Yeah, I'm happy to take the lead on that. I'm sure, yeah. there's, sure there's more species in that, but you're right, while we're all there, it'd be fun to just go around real fast, see what- Yeah, people definitely. Are. Yeah, and to, and to hear from you, like, I'm, I mean, it would be great to hear your um, methods, how you go about identifying the trees and so forth. That could be a fun activity, right? I look at the leaves. What, what do you want to know? <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Um, wildlife, I did my best. Um, Alex Smith, we'll have to hear from him if this, and, and from you, Zaley, if this um, information on fish is good. Um, let's see. This one was kind of a short and sweet plan because there wasn't a lot of information mm -hmm. for this part. Um, but essentially, we have some active open space here that gets regular use by, believe it or not, I've seen like Tai Chi classes being held out in the lawn there pretty regularly. But of course, it gets heavy use by kayakers and fisher, fisher people as well in the Elder Services sometimes does um, seated Tai Chi and yoga classes on the platform. So it gets a lot of use. It has some issues, of course, with maintenance. And, um, you know, it's at that, as Roy Schiff would describe it, it's at that sweet spot of creating a very accessible fishing experience for those who are mobility challenged. But also um, that puts it in a vulnerable spot as well. Mm -hmm in terms of ice, ice out and flood stage. So of course the mitigation designs for this fishing platform are now including things like breakaway rails that, that we could remove in anticipation of ice out and then block the path in a secure way to keep people from going out on the platform during those times when the railings are down. Um, and then, um, Mitigation design, this is, this is something that's being discussed with FEMA right now is whether they would pay for a design that would set the, um, a Trex boardwalk on helical piles that would be more resistant to moving in future floods and allow floodwaters to go underneath the Trex boardwalk um, and um, not result in the kind of erosion that we to the walk that we see under the current design. So that's being discussed in this at this very time in these recent couple of weeks. Um, and we'll hopefully hear more about that at a future meeting. Um, let's see other other points so, or issues or questions. Can I ask you a question about the the proposal and the projection for fixing the fishing access? Um, it sounds like there's still a lot of discussion about how to, what the best strategy is to make that resilient and um, strong. Um, once that is decided, and I don't know, I know the engineer, I saw the engineer's presentation and the whole thing about removing the, um, Sorry, I'm blanking for a word. The the bear, uh, the wall, the the railing. Yeah. Removing the railing before a storm so that it doesn't catch um, material coming down. But then there was a lot of discussion at that meeting about, well, you know, who's going to do that, and do do town workers have time to do that in addition to doing all their other preparation for a big storm coming? And I I wasn't sure that 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 was resolved. So I, I think my Basic question is, are we planning to wait 
to finish this document when we know what the final plans are? Or is this just a snapshot in time? This is where we are right now. Yeah, I, my feeling is it's it's the latter. It's it's a snapshot in time and um, and the, the condition of the the platform is really one element in a in a long list of park resources and issues and um, services. And so this is intended to be kind of a living document that gets revisited every few years just yeah. to make sure that we're up to date. Um, and I think this item in particular, the UFP platform, could be um, revisited in a couple, three years once we've resolved how to mitigate for um, flooding um, and, and determine whether we have FEMA funding sufficient to to um, redesign the platform. Okay. But, but I'm open to others' thoughts on that or discussion on that. Okay. Um, thank you to Alex for this Emerald Ash War stuff. I just pulled this right from the plan which is kind of cool to see that there's very detailed information about emerald ash um, or a tree or ash conditions on the on the property. Very cool. Great. Um, yeah, one point real quick, sorry. I know that can be kind of confusing. So there, the reason that there's so many concentrated like little circles, yeah, right there, is it's just a, an ash like tree that has a bunch of longer things growing up you know what i mean so it's not like oh. a bunch of ash trees right next to each other it's all come from, coming from one they told us to count that as separate okay. so so there's it, when you go out there and look it looks like there's fewer than than this map would indicate but um yeah the the there's like a, a string of them that are um not doing so good um and yeah. i know that we don't have access to this or at least i don't have access to this without asking a bunch of people but i know that they did put a, a purple trap at um cool. uh, eagle park a couple of years ago and it was on the far right dot uh the red dot that one that's right near the universal fishing platform yeah um, so so that's one of those spots where it was potentially confirmed um oh cool so i mean not so cool but <laughs> yeah right yeah cool but not cool yeah cool that we have the data yeah okay um and trash isn't really a huge problem there. Is that true, Alex? Yeah, it's not as bad as other places. Um, the parking lot is the biggest, like you know, culprit of that. Um, but not a not a big, not like Sycamore Park. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. So, if we feel like this is in a pretty good spot to forward as a draft to the select board, we could take a vote on that this evening, um, or we could certainly spend more time to fill in um, information that folks think might be pertinent. What, what are you, what's your pleasure on that? Well, the only thing that had red text, meaning we need more information is the tree identification. Right. And that could just be reworded to say the trees at that site include blankety, blankety, blank. And then later we can go, oh, you do say that. These species include. And then at some point we could um, do a thorough search and add anything that is not on that list. Okay. So it doesn't, like you know, what you're saying there is true that the, those, the trees there do include those. We're not saying that there's nothing else. I don't know what a ben, appendix B looks like. Is that just, a list of all um, no actually it was it would be where we would store a big more comprehensive list so um we could i could just remove that and say that our plans are to do a more thorough inventory in the future year yeah and that's a great idea okay um yeah. but we know we know that ash trees could probably be added to that huh oh, yeah thanks yeah, good point. <laughs> yep. and we know that seven ash trees one data we point we we have <laughs> Would that be just ash or is there a more formal way to describe the American ash or? Are they green? 
or white. Right. Yeah, it could be green. I'm not. We didn't get too deep into that. Um, so, but maybe when we go by, we can try to determine if it's yeah green or black. Most they told us most. You know, ver, most of Vermont is green ash. Okay. Okay, and um, I'm wondering uh, how you felt this compared to the Memorial uh, Park um, overview document. In, in what way? Like, well, I mean, it's always very comprehensive. Did you find that, you know, it, 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 as in terms of the format, obviously you, you kind of adhere to the same sort of um, approach, any, any major you know, things that kind of stuck out, but other than that, they're, you know, obviously they're different areas, but I just was kind of curious into your, your observation of the two different um, Plan. documents. Yeah. I mean, I think this is a more short and sweet plan perhaps um, because it's a smaller property, but also mm -hmm. because there's a little less, fewer issues maybe, I mean, you know, because at Memorial Park, we have some considerable trail uh, improvements to do and the issue of the bridge and so forth. So um, this was a little more short and sweet. I see. Thank you. Kristen, um, can I add one thing to the, the list of activities? Um, sure. So I know just from accidentally kind of stumbling upon it um but near the um the picnic bench on like the far side of the park um yeah. is a geocache location oh good point yeah hmm. so we should add that as well geocaching mm -hmm. cool <laughs> is that and that it doesn't tip off any searchers correct um, yeah because we're not telling them where it's just that we do it there or somebody does it there. I don't I, I didn't put it there. I just found it one day. So okay. yeah. excellent. That's cool. Good to know. Okay. So if I make that little change about the trees and I figure out when the sign went in, um, is it reasonable to say we could oh and I'll fill in what these numbers are too. Um, should we forward it to the select board at this time? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I don't know if we need a formal vote on that or anything. Do, you, do we? Mm -hmm. I make a motion that we leave it to Kristen's discretion as she com completes the uh, uh, few um, items. Okay. That need to be finished <laughs> was that a, was that a real motion should i ask for a second <laughs> i second that motion it was a motion okay <laughs> all in favor or any discussion oh. I should say. <laughs> <laughs> okay hearing no discussion all in favor hi 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 any opposed okay motion carries so I will um, make those edits and then forward it on to Valerie um, for the select board's review and review. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Sure. Thank you. Do we um, kind of on that same subject, do we what's the next plan we need to would like to tackle? And this so this could include Gosh, okay. It could include the town green, um, the coffin factory property, the Shattuck um, picnic area along Route 116. What else, Alex? What other parks do we have? Yeah, um, I mean, I suppose Saunders. Oh, yeah, River Saunders. Access. We kind of put Saunders at the end because it has an interim management plan for its easement. Mm -hmm. so, um, uh, and we could revisit Sycamore because that plan was done more than five years ago and a lot has changed at the park. Um, among all of those 
are, is there a priority, uh, of, uh, a greater priority of one of those over the others uh, that y'all would? I, I would promote that Sycamore revisiting that because if you go on the basis of the highest volume of use, yeah. that, uh, you know, and, and that it's listed uh, in town documents for visitors and so on, uh, I think that is really the one to focus on. It, okay. on at the top and priority of, of the, the ones you mentioned. That makes good sense to me. Do you, Alex, do you count Lord's Prayer Rock as a town park? Yeah, that's kind of like an in-between. Um, I do check it um, sort of on my list of places to check, um, but I don't do any uh, like active, um, management of, of that area besides just kind of keeping an eye on it um okay. but maybe that could be included um as well sounds good but first maybe the next one we tackle is sycamore i think i think that would be a good plan um so since we have something to go off of with the former plan and and now having some new plan experience i think that would go well okay that sounds good. I'll, I'll do that. I'll start on that and bring it in front of this group either next meeting or the meeting after. Okay, Memorial Plan, Eagle Plan. Okay, discussing the annual calendar is next. And let me paste into the chat the a link to that. Google Doc. So that's just popped over now. Um, we have several items already on here. Are there additional items that we want to put on our annual calendar? And, and again, this is a kind of a working document to help us remember to do certain tasks at certain times of the year. Um, so it's meant mostly for recurring tasks, but we can also put, um, you know, non-recurring tasks in there. One item should be the Eagle Park mulch um, and garden day. Is there a particular time uh, or typically we do that in March around green up day, but is there a particular Saturday or Sunday that would work for folks to do mulching and um, repair of the access ramp? Mm. You, did you mean in May around Green Up Day, not March? I did mean in May, thank you. Yeah, given that May 7th is Green Up Day and May 14th, we're doing Sycamore Park. Right. Um, I don't think it's gonna take very long. I think what you're describing will take maybe an hour for two or three people. Oh. Yeah, a couple hours, I would okay. say. Typically what it takes us, it's what it took it last took us last year to do just the mulch. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, do we want to spread them out? I mean, we, last year we did it on the first of May. Yeah, but actually, yeah, I know I won't be in town then, so I'm suggesting a day that I couldn't be there. That's not very helpful. Um, so do we want to couple it with a different event? I guess the eighth is Mother's Day. That probably won't work for a lot of people. Right, good point. Um, but like, yeah. And then making it the 15th would would make that a big weekend, which maybe would make it harder for people to make it to bowl. Mm -hmm. So that would leave the 21st or the 22nd, right? Or, or um, April 30th. Yeah, but that's a lot of consecutive Saturdays. <laughs> Alex and I wouldn't be able to make it to the thirtieth. We're out of town for a wedding, but okay. um, but that doesn't mean it can't be done. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, the just the jobs that need to be done don't have to be done in the spring or early summer. They can be doing done in June and July, right? Except for the mulch at the perennial garden, it is <laughs> handy to get that mulch on before the weeds start to grow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to suggest looking that April doesn't have anything uh, at the moment. Um, 
would it be feasible to move Sycamore Park? And I'm just thinking topographically here that you have Eagle and Memorial a little bit higher up and Sycamore's a little lower and maybe, you know, late April uh, it would work. So then that for, therefore May wasn't as busy as it is currently. And we put something into, you know, middle to late April and Sycamore being the one to move. Oh, okay. And well, we know that Daly and Alex can't do the 30th, can't do the end of April, and, and we're bumping up against currently, you know? Well, well this is a, this is going this would be going forward. It might it might not be that we, you know, this is actualized for this year, but Got going it. forward. Sorry, you're right. You're just talking in general. For yeah. 2023. Got it. We could do a late April at Sycamore, you're saying? Yes. Yeah, because that's a pretty substantial uh, day the way Alex has it outlined at this point. And I think, you know, when I look at, you know, we're dealing with rain, right? April, April uh, showers, spring May flowers. But if we have maybe two dates, uh, you know, as a backup, then or a rain date, then, you know, we, sh we shoot for the middle and then go to the go to the end uh, of April two two weekends in there and hopefully get one of them. Right. And maybe that's more in line with when the apple trees need to be pruned, maybe? Or is that always more? Well, the pruning is up earlier. You have it uh, under March. Yeah. And ideally that could really even be February. Um, it gives the, the trees a chance to heal up a little bit, but, uh, we had to decide on that, I think, um, and mm -hmm. Helen and I were able to get to it. Uh, I think we committed to it on the February meeting and then we, Helen and I found a time that worked in March. So we could move that to February in a, and, you know, again, weather cooperating. Okay. And Alex, I think we agree, I mean, uh, Jono, um, that we did such a thorough job pruning this year that it might not need anything next year. We, we might have done two years worth. We'll see. It might not be an annual occurrence. Got it. Yeah, I, I would uh, I would revise that statement a little bit in that water spouts uh, occur on an annual basis, but that work is is much lighter than what I think Helen and I accomplished. So the bulk of the work, uh, it, it was done um, to get things back to um, a, a good sort of uh, maintenance level. Um, but I think the water spouts occur, you know, every year they just, that's what the tree does. And so you, you have to kind of stay on top of those each year, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, I popped it in there as possible, a possibility for February in the next year. Um, other items for this um, annual calendar. And we still have to kind of, I suppose we could, um, outline the tasks that need to be done at Eagle Park, and we wouldn't necessarily have to all congregate on one day. Mm -hmm. uh, we could chip away at some of these tasks when we each have time or an availability. Is that, I mean, because weeding is pretty straightforward. Um, tackling the Japanese knotweed is pretty straightforward. Um, <laughs> Digging up sycamore, uh, so, I'm sorry. Um, sumac. Sumac is kind of a as you go thing. Um, since we already have quite a few commitments in May, maybe we could just keep in touch over email about those tasks that are needed at um, Eagle Park. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Is it too late to put uh, Eagle Park, given this year, into June? It's not too late, no. Uh, the reason I, I suggest that is because I found it really wonderful last year. You know, someone has a bonding experience to get to know fellow members and past members when we were all there. Dave was there. And sure. I just think the camaraderie of that is really very valuable if we yeah. can coordinate, you know, a single visit versus, you know, when it fits. I know I, I wouldn't be as charged up to go up there on my own personally, whereas when I'm going to be working with everybody else, I feel like that's really um, a joyous time. Sure. Yep, we could plan for a, a time in June. Like early June, maybe um, how about 4th, June 4th or 5th, that Saturday or Sunday? Yeah, I think that's manageable. If, if it, it, you're going at a minimum two or three weeks apart from any other you know, larger work day, then yeah. I think that gives a chance for people to recuperate. <laughs> right. Um, I will um, send out some reminders over email um, and we'll revisit that also during the May Conservation Commission meeting. Um, but for now, let's plan on maybe June 4th or 5th of that weekend. And I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. So if, if we're creating a, a checklist of annual tasks, actually June, June we're doing Eagle Park, aren't oh, we? Yes, we are. Yeah. Um, are the two parks that are likely to need annual care, Eagle Park and Sycamore Park? Yes. Okay. So we should, they should be in here as, you know, annual events. So yes. if June, we can do Eagle Park and sometime in May, we can do Sycamore, we're done. And then yep. we're adding a, a March um, apple pruning event. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. I think what's confusing about this table is we have this year's dates and then proposed future dates. Yeah. But it, it's there. It, they're labeled, so you just have to pay it. Well, essentially, uh, if it goes um, March, which was the Apple, uh, April, which was vacant, and then May, which is kind of where things stand for this year, we could change that to go February, March, and then essentially April, uh, and maybe not go into June. But yeah. The, the, the three months in, in, in succession, I think, work pretty well. I yeah. noticed that um, August all the way through December is pretty darn wide open. I just was trying to think of what, what might be spread what, into there. But what can we defer? <laughs> Deferred maintenance into fall, no. Yeah. OK. Uh, well, just to keep us on track, because we still have a few more things to cover tonight. Um, we can always revisit this um, again um, next May and tweak it each month, I would say. Great. Okay. Um, yeah, we do have quite a few items here. Yeah. <laughs> Operating budget. Um, we still should have about 250 in there. Carolyn was not able to get um, a answer from the town because this is such a very busy time for them with taxing and accountants and things like that. Um, but there's probably about 250 in their operating budget. We still need some ideas to, for spending that down. Um, and maybe it's materials for the Sycamore Park workday. Can you get our screen, get the screen back to all of our faces, please? Oh. I thought that it was. <laughs> well, I have it here. Oh, sorry. It's because I've just opened. Never mind. I just have a Google document open. Are you good? Okay. Got it. There you are. Okay. Thank you. Sure, sure. Um, okay. So, if there are any thoughts about how to spend down the operating budget, 
maybe email those to Carolyn or speak up now. So um, some substantial metal poles for the pollinator garden. Okay. At least eight and maybe 12 or more. And you know, those aren't cheap. So I would do those. And then Jono, when we were out there, we were looking at the fencing. And I think one of them, they have different kinds of fencing for the two pollinator gardens. And one of them looks like it's survived winter better than the other. Yeah, I've my recollection was one was sort of a chicken wire, which that doesn't hold up for that purpose that well. And the other was something that was more sturdy. Yeah, the, the other option that you're mentioning is like a coated wire. It's like green coated wire. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree the, that I think that was the primary um, or that was the goal to do both with that and then they ran out or whatnot. Um, so another role or two to eventually replace so that they're both consistent and yeah, that might be good. And I mean, if we're going to do that during the Sycamore Park cleanup, should should we just go buy those? I mean, who who does this? <laughs> Um, any, any one of us can go and buy them and like at Martin's and then you um, put it on the town's account. Ooh, and, uh, you shouldn't have told me that. And then the paperwork <laughs> that the tape paperwork that you receive just mark on their conservation commission operating budget and bring a copy of that into Sharon. I think that would more or less work. So do we have a volunteer that would like to purchase the uh, materials less than, probably keeping the budget to less than 200. And, and, and that's if we all agree, I suppose we should have a vote about this as well. If that's how we should spend the money. Right. Um, well, uh, before we do that, I know Alex probably has a pretty good handle of various needs of the parks, so I would Kind of defer to him if that's a high enough priority and then, then number two i also wanted to hark back to the list that we were just on the google document that at one point we talked about uh generating a list so we didn't just have things that kind of came up but things that could be planned on and things that might be uh you know every other year or, or so on i just wonder if we could add that to that google document a list of since it's all in one place of uh, fund um, uh, or expenditures, fund expenditures. I like that idea. Um, and I'll add a new part to that document right now. Possible funding, possible uses for annual operating budget. Great, thank you. So um, sturdy fence posts for Sycamore Pollinator Garden. I'm just thinking about how that project originated. It, did it come from Porter and her having an intern and deciding that that was something that they thought would be a good place to do it? Um, and then now it's sort of in our lap. Is that sort of the rough? Well, it, 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 be, it becomes a, an, an amendment to the town, uh, not an amendment, but a, a, a thing at the ta at town park. And we're one of the entities that helps to manage that town park. So, so it, it was an, an addition, park. sort of like the apple trees at, at, at one point way long ago. And then now we become the stewards to prune the apple trees and oversee the pollinator garden. Who knows what's next? Okay, I'm just trying to get a handle on that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that was the procedure. So she came and uh, Jenny was the intern's name uh, who came and had the proposal um, and uh, came and visited the site. And uh, um, uh, I think at one point she was like on uh, like speakerphone with us when we were sitting in. Um, you know, the little pavilion area. Um, so yeah, I think uh, from, 
yeah from my perspective uh, a lot of the the boxes were checked as far as how this type of thing should go in the future um and it yeah like we we i think the conservation commission ends up inheriting a project after a year and then continues it you know the next step kind of takes the torch and and runs with it the rest of the way um but yeah that was that's the rough version of it yeah Alex, if you think that we might be leaning towards that, if it meets your kind of criteria mm -hmm. for priority, then another uh, angle on it is there's always the potential for vandalism because that stuff kind of, you know, anything from a intentional act or somebody just mountain biking and <laughs> going into it. So I think it needs to be sturdy enough. And it mm -hmm. also could be that somebody just decides, oh, I like that fence. Um, it would be great over my garden. So something that's solid enough that it's there for a good period of time. So we're not replacing it continually because that's, you know, uh, uh, wasted money, but mm -hmm. probably not so over um, uh, um, material, uh, the material such that it's, it's, beyond what we really need for cert to serve the purpose. Right. So it sounds like that that coated um, wire, which we saw, what Helen and I saw was pretty sturdy and that might be the, the ticket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think the, the thought with that was mainly to protect the new plants um, from getting browsed on by deer. And the eventual goal um, or the sort of vision was similar to the um, annual, uh, you know, the perennial garden at Eagle, um, which is really nice and doesn't need a fence at this point. Everything is really strong and healthy. Um, so that's ideally what it would look like in the future. Um, I, I don't know if Jenny thought about so it that mulch far from ahead. That point on. Yeah. So just so. mulch from that point on after right. removing the fence. Right. Once, once the, once the, plants are, are really good and solid after a few years, then ideally it's just another, you know, just mulch it every year and um, let it grow. So uh, one last thing. Well, I, know so we're I think I interrupted. I guess we're back to the decision if that's, if that's the direction to go in. Uh, and if so, who might be willing to pick up the fence material role? Happy to do that. I think I need to know what it's called. What should I, I mean, I've, I'll, maybe I'll just go out and look at it again at Sycamore Park and then go to Martin's specifically. Okay. And then um, the, the corner posts, I'll just do the same thing. I'll just estimate approximately what would, what's ideal and then what we can afford. And we'll just, I'll just pare it down until those two numbers match. That would be great. Thank and you. have it available at Sycamore Park for the day we're working there. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and just I would say under 200 because we have to leave about 500 to pay the dues, the annual dues for the Vermont Association of Conservation Commissions. Fifty. You mean fifty dollars? We pay them you about. You said five hundred. Sorry, fifty. <laughs> I get up wicked early, and so by this time of the day, my brain just starts to shut down. Okay. Um, I meant 50, $50. Okay. I have a feeling. I had it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Great. Okay. Thank you. So next item is re um, updated wildlife survey. Um, and this top, this is kind of a new topic because uh, has come out of the um, discussions that have been brought to us by members of the public in the last couple of meetings. Um, one item that we identified that we could do as a conservation commission in service to the, the town, the community here, um, we recognize that the wildlife crossing information that is present in the town plan um, and referenced in the town plan is quite a bit out of date um, and could be updated because um, of development patterns in the town. We expect that wildlife 
crossing locations are changing and then the main routes that wildlife use to traverse this town are probably changing. Mm -hmm. uh, so there were a couple of grants identified um, by members of the public um, at our last meeting. And one of them had a due date of April 8th. Is that right, Zaley? Um, yeah. And we, I mistakenly looked at the calendar last time thinking that we would have a conservation commission meeting the day before the 8th, but it's actually the week after the 8th. So we were, we were not able to meet as a commission to approve a grant application to meet that April 8th deadline. But those were tiny grants from the VACC, the Vermont Association of Conservation Commissions, on the order of a few hundred dollars, which could be useful to purchase equipment. But I also felt like we needed to have a discussion as a commission first to really identify what our goals were. Mm -hmm. um, and if our goal is something like update the wildlife tracking maps for the town of Bristol, that's a far different scope of work mm -hmm. than, than simply supporting citizen science for identifying wildlife in the town. So mm -hmm. um, maybe we could have a short discussion about what we think our goals would want to be going forward. And then we can identify the grant sources that would appropriately match that scope of work. So anything you'd like to add, Zaley? Um, no, I, I think I think that that covers um, that part. But I do think I I think that would be a worthwhile goal. Um, to, update, to update the maps. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how we go about that, but but I, you know. Yeah, How I were the data collected originally to make those maps? Originally, those maps were generated by um, Lewis Creek Association, and they had a much more comprehensive study that was done. They invited folks in like Sue Morse to do, um, to teach wildlife tracking to citizens in the five or seven towns that comprise the Lewis Creek watershed. Um, and they generated the mapping and then that mapping was translated um, for the individual towns by regional planning commission. As a wow. But that was you know, back in the early 2000s, I think. So, so would um, it be worth um, contacting them and seeing if they wanna to work together on this or should we just kind of go for it ourselves? That's a good idea. Yeah, we could do that for sure to see if they wanted to update that mapping and work collaboratively with us on that. I did also reach out to a few people. Um, Williston has recently updated their maps and mm -hmm. they said that they hired a consultant to do that with some grant funding. Um, but that also involves some citizen science as well. Um, so there, there is that route as well. We could, we could go that route as a town and just secure grant funding to hire a consultant to kind of steer that process. Or we could collaborate with like the Lewis Creek Association of Watershed Group to gather citizens to collect this data um, and work also with the Regional Planning Commission to do the mapping, which might save us a little bit of grant money. Mm -hmm. It seems like to do a, a good thorough job would be incredibly difficult um, um, that you're, I assume that the goal is to look at where all the roads are and try to determine, I mean, if it's wildlife crossing, you're determining who's using those roads, right? To cross and we're identifying areas that there's a lot of wildlife versus not a lot of wildlife. Is that true? Is that what well, I, think I haven't seen the map? I think we're identifying um, common crossing locations uh, in, as, as one element of this overall effort, but also um, identifying corridors that they travel among. And that's what a consultant can help with because wow. they have a lot of that information already. It seems to me that there's a few different levels. The first one is is your baseline where, as you say, the, the knowledgeable um, uh, 
people like Sue Morris and so on, they establish those corridors and so on. Then your next level is probably the citizen science scientist kind of um, anecdotally saying, yeah, we see a lot of turkeys crossing <laughs> back and forth here or whatever. Yeah. Um, I also noticed something at uh, on the New Haven for Front Porch Forum requesting send in your observations of wildlife, but that was a general, you know, wildlife kind of in your backyard, not related to crossing. So I wonder if that's the third component is, is overall abundance of levels of wildlife. I know the Audubon does a pretty good job with Randy who used to be on this commission, uh, asking for help to do the Christmas uh, bird count surveys yeah. as, a, and as an example. Exactly. And that's, that's, you know, that's a good 20 plus year history where they can start to see trends and, and that's, that's very valuable. So I, I just don't, I don't know. It sounds like you have a good familiarity with the process, Kristen. Yeah. And I'd be happy to work as part of a subcommittee um, to kind of gather more information and bring it back to this commission for the next meeting um, with maybe some options for us to think about. Can I ask, is, is that in our purview? Is that part of our charge? Because that, that seems it's, you're covering a lot more territory. You're covering areas that have no parks. No, it, it, it is part of our purview to think about the wildlife resources of the town and okay. support um, the collection of data and and so forth. We can we can certainly guide that process and secure the grants uh -huh. that could do that. For example, um, we got grant funding to map the bedrock and superficial geology of the town hmm. as a, um, a a resource layer for the town, essentially. And I think of this as just another resource layer of the town. Right. Um, right. And typically, that involves grant funding to to um, hire consultants to help coordinate that process and yeah. could involve as much um, public outreach as we want or citizen science as we want or as little as we want. Um, but I think having, it could be a fun activity for a lot of families and a lot of citizens in town. So I'd be in favor of incorporating some citizen science as part of that. Right, I think my, my concern about, maybe we're spending too much time on this. I Why don't, would you like to work together to develop some kind of proposal for the next meeting? And all we can talk about this in more sure. detail. Yeah. That's what I was thinking is we could just reach out to our networks and understand how other towns have done it and come back to the group with a couple of different plans. That I'm, I'm happy to write the Lewis Creek Association. I've been in touch with them a lot in the last year. So I'm happy to write them and just see if that's something that's sort of in their zone of interest or not that then we bring that information back <laughs> yeah that'd be great okay so we can plan to have this as an item on next month's agenda again and we'll we'll right. have hopefully some more concrete things to share and talk about okay cool um edith stock trust i this is on the um, agenda to discuss and brainstorm best uses of the funds that have been entrusted to the Conservation Commission now that the Edith Stock Trust has been disbanded as of a year ago or so. Um, the notes here from Carolyn indicate that we still don't know the value, the, the number of dollars in the fund uh, because they're so busy right now with the taxes and accounting and so forth. My suggestion to the commission would be that we table this until next meeting once we have an idea of what that number is. Yeah. Thoughts on that? Does that sound reasonable? Mm -hmm. Yes, my recollection was it uh, was somewhere in the two thousand dollar range. Yeah, but it would be good to get the concrete number and then sure. bring, brainstorm next time. Um, next item is the library. Spring project, Nancy. Um, did you want to share some information about that? 
Yeah. Um, so it's just a, a wall in the children's uh, room that Marita has put up that we put up to for, I think, mostly kids and teens, but anyone is welcome to um, bring drawings or pictures of plants or animals they see around town to add I think she said they did it several years ago maybe and it was pretty in depth with a map and pretty involved it sounded like um but if any of you remember that but um yeah this one's just a, a wall with with the pictures on it so people can see what is around town and I did notice today I'm um, from porch forum or maybe it was yesterday she um Put out a notice of uh, inviting folks to bring their spring observations yes photos drawings that kind of thing cool mm -hmm. excellent um and there's a place to email submissions as well yep yeah okay. yes you can um oh, sorry um you can email the pictures if you want then they'll print them out for you if you don't have a printer or such okay Okay, cool. Excellent. Um, anything more on that item from others? Okay. Um, illegal dumping sites. Um, typically, Alex updates us here. Did he share anything with you, Zaley? Nope. Okay. So we can. Um, Table that until next time. The tree planting committee updates from Alex M. Yeah, um, I had a first kind of uh, initial meeting um, where we talked with the leader of the Middlebury uh, tree planting group. Um, she shared a lot of um, sort of their project goals and, and how they went about um, their group. Uh, they sh she shared that with um, the Bristol uh, folks, uh, which was really helpful. Um, and they're willing to share, um, again, like kind of their, their rough outline of a plan. And, um, we were talking just before the meeting started, um, that one of the first things the group is going to do is try to come up with a mission and come up with some goals, um, and go from there. So, uh, that's going to happen in early May. That's when the next meeting is. Um, and, uh, it's uh, meant to be kind of like an ad hoc committee, um, so not formal or anything like that, um, and still kind of, it's still fairly new and fresh. Um, so if uh, anybody is interested or wants to learn more, um, we're sort of envisioning two types of um, sort of community involvement. Um, one level being like you really are into it and want to be a part of the monthly meetings. Um, you want to be involved in writing grants. You want to be involved in, you know, planning and, and stuff like that. Or do you just want to like help neighbors plant trees physically? Um, or do you want to, you know, help maintain trees like water trees for the first couple of years or something like that? So um, we're anticipating those kind of two levels of participation. Um, and yeah, uh, if you know of anybody who's interested, um, feel free to pass along my email. Um, and yeah, hopefully we're able to um, get a little bit of uh, this figured out and then there can be sort of a public, um, I don't know, unveiling of the group. So yeah. Cool. Excellent. Questions for Alex on that? Other thoughts? Do, do you need a, an official liaison from this commission to that committee or just kind of, as you mentioned, it's really just an ad hoc? Yeah, I think um, going along with the model of the Middlebury group, um, you know, it, there, there really doesn't isn't like a, a required amount of um, input from each sort of, you know, each of the stakeholders in the town. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a pretty straightforward connection right between Bristol conservation people and, and Bristol tree planting people. So um, I, I think it might still be valuable to, to keep those two groups somewhat connected um, by just giving quick updates at these meetings. And, um, you know, 
I plan on still being on it. So I, I can kind of be the only like the liaison anyway. Um, so that might work out easily. Um, and uh, yeah, but it's, it's kind of like open invitation um, really. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we'll keep it on the agenda just to maintain that connection. I think. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Um, Helen, um, ARPA committee, do you have an update for us? I do not. We've met again and delegated responsibilities, but um, yeah, there's there's nothing to report. Okay. <laughs> That's short and sweet. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jono and or Helen, the Bristol Climate Change Forum from yesterday, I understand um, you at the last minute couldn't make it, Jono? Yeah, that's that's right. I had a uh, abscess tooth. Um, well, about a day and a half ago, which just really took off um, and uh, was able to get up to the office in Williston. And thankfully, uh, with the procedure, I won't go into the details of uh, it's resolved with an, and I'm taking an antibiotic and things are uh, getting back to normal. But uh, what I did do, as a result, I did miss the meeting. Um, I took a nap. I was just a little zonked and, and did not pay attention to the rest of the day. So what I did do was in the morning today, I emailed um, Linda Andrews, who seemed to be coordinating the forum with the notes that you had provided and just a, a, some brief uh, sense of what I thought the commission was doing. And she was going to uh, forward that on. And then Helen may have some more because thankfully she was in attendance of the meeting and can fill us in uh, further. Um, no, I don't have anything to add to it. So I did attend the meeting and about halfway through, they were saying, I wonder where Jono is. And I wonder <laughs> if he's gonna come and we were trying to call you. And finally I said, I'm a member of the conservation commission. I can, I can, report for them and they said okay okay we'll put you you know further down they had other commissions that needed to report and by 8 30 they still had not gotten to me and I had been on there for an hour and a half and I just I wrote them in the chat um, a very brief outline of what was in your email Kristen about riparian zones and maintaining green spaces and said good luck so your your email today, Jono, was perfect because I really filled in a lot. I just gave them a skeletal outline and then you filled it in. So I feel as though we were represented, although quite awkwardly. <laughs> well, so I'm curious, uh, what did you think of how the meeting, uh, what the overview was and, and their focus? And well, they were the interested in how each of these committees is addressing climate change. And so the energy committee had a lot to talk about. Um, sure. Just, uh, this was, uh, I just forgot her name, Burrell. Sarah? Uh, oh. uh, Sally. Sally. Oh. She gave a very thorough, detailed description of the, ver the different things they have been doing over the years to try to increase energy efficiency and decrease mm -hmm. fossil fuel use. And it was really quite good. Um, Kevin Hansen, I think is his name, represented the yeah. planning commission. And um, this is being recorded, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'll just say that it was very detailed and, um, and long. So by the, by the time there was time, well, and then there was just a lot of discussion between each of these, asking questions about each element of the energy commission's um, report. So there was a lot of chatting and Linda wrote this morning that um, a good thing that came out of that meeting is that they did chat a lot and formed little liaisons and are taking on subsets of assignments to continue use to try to assess what Bristol is doing to um, ameliorate climate change. So do you, think, do you think they would have another another session or is that well, that's a good that? question. I don't know. I don't know. Cool. Well, thanks for um representing us. 
kind of, <laughs> in face only. <laughs> well, and for forwarding on um, that information, John, I would feel, yeah. At least sure. it got in, there, got in the record. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks for helping with providing some uh, background. Yeah. Historical sure. history. You know, yeah. Historical memory. <laughs> historical history. <laughs> Right. Time to run out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. One last item. Uh, Green Up Day, May 7. Um, Carolyn reports that she has all the stuff. Okay. The okay. bags are ready to distribute to Bristol Elementary. 31, 30 bags will go there. 20 bags will go to Red Cedar. Um, and then she has extras for the library and Holly Hall. Um, it's still planning on being a fully socially distanced event. Um, so people will just pick up their bags and do their thing and set the bags out on the roadside for the road crews to pick up on the Monday. Alex put up posters already, right? Sounds like. Yep. yep. Um, and the road crew is prepared to do their normal pickup. So I think everything's... Um, well organized, well in hand. And I've seen some front porch forum posts uh, by Carolyn uh, announcing things. So um, that seems like it's it's all organized. Any any other questions or thoughts? No, just uh, that bags uh, available to pick up at Holly Hall the week, like one week before the event, starting one week before the event. So. In okay. case anybody asks, please don't send them over three weeks before the event. <laughs> so, but one, yeah. week, one week before. Okay. Right. And uh, to be clear, uh, Holly Hall, meaning the uh, big porch, sort of yeah. the, the main entrance, and it'll be outside. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Super. And then, um, so we don't have any plans as a commission to be together on that day to do any of the parks or anything, but um, we can each individually um, chip in where we want to chip in. Um, okay. Um, next meeting, May 12th, is going to be uh, outdoors at the pavilion near the hub. There will not be a Zoom link available at that meeting. Um, so as long as everyone still agrees, that's a good plan. They feel comfortable with that plan. That's that's what we'll do is have an outdoor meeting at the hub. And then maybe we can get um, Dave Rosen to join us as well. Um, thoughts, concerns about that? I'm excited to meet you guys. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Ditto. Yeah, it'll be nice to be in person again. Three dimensions. That'll be fun. Okay. Well, if there are no other items, I think we, I will accept or look for a motion to adjourn. All motion. Okay. And okay. Excellent. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so that's it. Thank you, Kristen. Here we go. Thank you all for joining. And thank you, Zaley. Yeah. Thanks thank for you, Zaley. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank have you. Have a great Easter holiday for everyone. Thank yeah, you. Have a great holiday. Yeah, bye everyone. Bye.